everybody, this is Blake here, and welcome to my review of Lincoln, the latest film by Steven Spielberg. Now, I have to confess, I had very little interest in watching this one. Uh, it has a great cast, for sure. I love everybody involved. And I do still consider myself to be a fan of Steven Spielberg, even if he's not quite the director that he used to be. See, I'm probably the only person in the whole world that liked Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, as flawed as it was. But my issue with Spielberg is that these days... It seems like he prefers making movies that don't really appeal to my taste. So I haven't seen War Horse or The Terminal or that animated one. I'm sure they're decent films, but they're just not my cup of tea. So obviously that was uh, going against Lincoln because I figured this would just be one of those kinds of movies. But when I saw the trailers for this, I became downright hostile. I thought the trailers for Lincoln sucked. Everything about them reeked of Oscar bait, and I cannot stand Oscar bait type movies. I feel the greatest movies ever made were born from legitimate inspiration. The writers had a great idea and knew how to explore that idea, and the director knew how to tell that story. Uh, when it comes to certain movies, for example, even though I know I'm going to get shit for this, Tree of Life, I feel that the filmmakers made it just so they can get nominated for an Oscar. So they really go too far to appeal to that crowd. To me, that is not true inspiration. Um, I, I actually think that's kind of fake of the filmmakers to do that. And maybe I'm being harsh. Uh, maybe these weren't Spielberg's intentions. But everything about Lincoln suggested it. It seemed like the trailers made it seem like it was trying way too hard to be either tear jerking or inspirational, and it backfired for me and came across as phony and sappy. So everything about this seemed like it was that Lincoln was going to be doomed for failure. Luckily for it, the only other release coming out that week was Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2. And I feel the need to go to the movies once a week. So it was either Lincoln, which I might hate, or Twilight, which I will definitely hate. So I figure I'll just go with the lesser of two evils, Lincoln. Uh, and I'm actually glad I did, because as concerned as I was, Lincoln is a pretty good film. Maybe even a really good film. It's not perfect. It's not for everybody. Uh, but once you understand what it's aiming for, uh, at least I think you'll respect it. Uh, okay, first off, I think the thing that you really need to know is that it does not really focus on the Civil War at all in terms of action. You get one battle sequence in the very opening scene, but after that you only get some aftermath shots of you know bodies laying about. Uh, real powerful stuff, but this movie isn't about at any of the action that took place during the, the Civil War. It is more about the politics behind it. And I'm actually going to explain later on how it's not even really about that. Uh, so the, the story takes place during, I think, the last four months of Lincoln's life as he tries to pretty much abolish sl slavery completely. Uh, the big problem is even though uh, if, you, if the slaves joined the... You know, the, ideally in the Union, the slaves are free, but that was for more military purposes. So after the war, they can easily go back to being slaves again. So Lincoln's really working hard to uh, to finally abolish that, but it's not easy. Everybody's opposing him. Um, it's actually really weird because, uh, and I actually forgot about this, but Lincoln is a Republican. It seems like the Republican Party are the ones who want slavery abolished, while the Democrats... Uh, they don't necessarily support slavery, but they think they just want the war to end and they think slavery is a necessary evil to keep the South uh, from you know, continuing the rebellion. So it's just weird because these days you think of uh, you know, how the civil rights was the complete opposite. The Republicans were being the old stuffy guys where the Democrats were really fighting for you know, equality for everybody. But um, I know that's a gross generalization on either side, but just weird watching this for that reason. And um, But it's, it's very talky, it's very dialogue-oriented, but the dialogue is really sharp. It's not as over-the-top as it was in the trailers either. Pretty much all the scenes from the trailers, those are the, the, the scenes that are intended to be these big, major speeches. So it's not like the entire movie is like that, even though it sometimes pushes it. Uh, the... The trailer is just, that's why they feel over the top, because they're showing the most over the top parts in the whole film. 
Um, but really, you know, throughout the bulk of the feature, I was like, okay, this is a really well done movie, but I feel like this scene could have been cut down. This scene could have been totally removed. Maybe this whole subplot could have been totally removed, or this character wasn't really a necessity. But then I began to realize that, you know, it's not just that this movie isn't about the Civil War. It's also really not about, uh, the end of slavery. It's, it's about the effects on Lincoln's life as a result of all this. Uh, maybe it could have been better if they started off at an earlier time and you saw Lincoln as the strong, um, cause he was apparently a really strong dude in real life. Uh, you know, you know, maybe at the start of his presidency where he was in the feet, uh, peak physical condition or whatever, but, uh, you know, his health really sucks throughout the course of the film. He always seems tired and we weary. Um, he's really soft spoken and quiet. Uh, at times, he seems really absent-minded. Uh, his quest for the end of slavery ends up alienating certain um, people in his family. Uh, his wife is pretty much kind of crazy. Their relationship is really strained. He kind of ignores his oldest son. And uh, people in his own party think he's doing a terrible job, and not to mention the other party, which wants him removed completely. And that's what really this film is about. It's about his internal struggle just as much as the external struggle and um you have to accept that if you want to enjoy this movie because a lot of it if you just believe that it's about the politics behind the civil war you're probably going to get bored because you don't really need these scenes with him and his wife um or him and his son it just it'll seem like filler if you don't really look at it as more of a character understudy now, uh, what makes it work, of course, is that the acting is great. Daniel Day-Lewis is amazing as Abraham Lincoln. You know, one thing I really respect about this guy is even though you don't see him a whole lot, I never look at him as Daniel Day-Lewis. He almost is the character he's playing. Whenever I saw him, I just saw Abraham Lincoln, and he's a, a much more down-to-earth uh, Lincoln than I'm what I'm used to. I'm used to, you know, the stronger, sturdier Lincoln who just makes awesome speeches nonstop. This guy, you know, sometimes he'll sit down and tell a story that maybe was a bit over the two top and cheesy, but the way he tells it is so compelling that, you know, this, this is probably the closest interpretation of how Abraham Lincoln was in real life. And, uh, you know, it just, I cannot stress how great Daniel Day-Lewis is in this performance. It's weird because the last movie I saw with him was There Will Be Blood, where he plays a total opposite kind of character. So props to you, man. You did great. And then uh, Sally Field is spectacular as his wife. They don't really play her as crazy as much as she's just really highly strung. Um, she's haunted by the death of, of her son, which took place oh, a long time ago. I, I don't really remember when but uh before the movie begins and but she's trying to be strong but she's not totally succeeding so she she's just a mess she's not really portrayed as psychotic or just even crazy she's just a total wreck but she's sympathetic yet at the same time she's also charismatic and has moments where she's just awesome and uh but my favorite characters were Tommy Lee Jones who it's hilarious. He has the best dialogue in the whole movie, even though he is pretty much just playing Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, but he was a lot of fun. And then uh, James Spader has a, a smaller role, but it's also a real important role. And he's also really hilarious, uh, has some of the best lines, has a lot of charisma. You just love the guy. And uh, But all the actors are, are spectacular. They're all interesting to watch. There isn't a weak link amongst them. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys... You know, really, I think I recognized everybody, if not by name, then at least by face. You have Hal Holbrook, uh, and he looks really old. That actually kind of frightened me, because I didn't realize he'd aged so much. But then again, he was pretty old during the 70s, too, so uh, that shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who seems to be appearing in everything these days, uh, and he's probably not. he's probably the closest thing to a weak link, only because... It's just Joseph Gordon Lovett. There's not a whole lot to that character, um, but you know he still does a solid job. And then you know there's just a bunch of people I recognized. Uh, the female chief from Law and Order has a small role, and it, it's like there's no nobody uh, part in this film, and that was real fun. 
But uh, that is really all it is. It's just great acting, great dialogue, but that's what is necessary because it is a character understudy. It is about the characters and their interactions. It's not really about the story. Uh, the narrative is very loose because it's just it's about the, uh, the effects of these events on these people. So if, you, if that sounds appealing to you, definitely check it out. It is not perfect. I felt like the whole thing with Lincoln and his eldest son, who's played by Joseph Gordon Lovett, could have been explored a little bit more. Um, I, I never really understood why Lincoln was flat out ignoring, not necessarily ignoring, ignoring him, but kind of shunning him. I felt that could have been explored a little bit more or removed altogether. But, uh, you know, for the most part, that's just nitpicking. I will say that this still isn't my kind of movie, but I can respect these types of films if done right. I, for example, love The King's Speech. I wouldn't say I loved Lincoln, but I did like it a lot. Um, Spielberg's direction is, uh, you know, pretty simplistic. You know, you have a few Spielberg touches. Like at one point when Lincoln's telling the story, the camera slowly zooms in, which is a Spielberg trait I noticed since Jaws. Uh... You know, he loves doing that when somebody's having a big speech. You know, the camera kind of slowly zooms in so as it gets closer to their face. But the the scenes that are more spectacle-oriented, like when he, he's walking through a battlefield and he sees all these dead bodies, it's really effective. And there's this bit where uh, Joseph Gordon-Lovett sees a bunch of body parts. That was really effective, too. But for the most part, Spielberg's direction is just don't get in the way of the actors and as such, he succeeded. So once again, if, if this sounds appealing to you, uh, definitely give it a look, at least as a matinee. I don't know if I'd say full price. If, if, if this isn't your type of movie, then I wouldn't pay full price at the absolute most matinee. But, if, uh, but personally, this is one of those films where I kind of wondered, I could have easily saw this on DVD, and I think I would have liked it a little bit more just because it seems like that, you know when you watch a movie in theaters, it really magnifies your experience, uh, for better or worse. So with a special effects laden film, um, it's better to watch it in theaters just because you're getting the full impact of the visuals. And uh, in some cases, like with Lincoln, it, it really the only thing that the, watching in the theaters added was it made the slow pace seem more obvious because uh, it isn't a fast-paced movie it is pretty slow paced and don't confuse that with boring um, it was still engaging but uh, you know there were times where I was like okay can we please move this along um, and then uh, but if I had seen it on DVD it seems like pacing in general isn't as much of an issue when I watch a movie on DVD unless it is a real boring movie uh, so I probably would have enjoyed it more as a rental, but it was, I, I don't regret watching this. Um, it's, I wouldn't call it historically accurate. Um, I think it's common knowledge that uh, the vampires sided with the Confederates and Abraham Lincoln had to take all the, the country's silver and use that as bullets to defeat the vampires, and that's how the Civil War ended, but they never really acknowledged that. I thought that was a major problem. So if you want a more historically accurate film, um, watch Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. But if you just want a good drama, definitely check out Lincoln. So that is my review. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys later.